Flamenco repertoire is so vast, when you learn flamenco, it's very easy to get lost in it. So many palos, so many styles, so many interpretations. That's why you have to develop a strategy, a learning strategy. If you don't want to waste hours taking classes, you will forget. Watching thousands of videos you don't understand, listening to Kante you don't recognize. Today, I'm going to introduce you to an amazing new friend who will really help you optimize your learning. Hi, this is Guillermo Guillen for Flamenco Maths. Welcome to my channel. Whether you dance flamenco, you sing flamenco, you play guitar, you play palmas, you play cajon, or you just love it and you want to understand how it works. Today, I want to talk to you about the principles that comes straight out of the world of economics, but that we can apply to so many things in life the Pareto Principle or the Pareto Rule, also known as the 80-20 Rule. Wilfredo Pareto was an Italian sociologist and economist of the end of the 19th century, beginning of the 20th century. And he had a very nice beard, but that's not the point. During his studies, he realized that in general, approximately 80% of a nation's income was owned by only 20% of the population. In other words, it means that in life, most things are not evenly distributed and 80% of the effects are caused by 20% of the causes. This principle was widely extrapolated to the business world. 80% of your profits come from 20% of your product. 80% of your sales come from 20% of your clients. Or talking about productivity, 80% of work done in a meeting are done in 20% of the duration of the meeting. Good. And this is when you tell me, I don't see the connection with flamenco. Well, we can apply this principle directly to flamenco learning or to any learning for that matter. Because you are the leader of your learning company whose goal is to increase your flamenco knowledge, you must optimize your way of learning. It may sound cold to you and maybe disconnected from the wonderful world of art, the magic of music, uh, the emotions and the mystery of flamenco. But let's be honest, when we learn something, our brain doesn't care about magic. But yes, it does care about optimization. One of the ultimate goals in flamenco is to know how to recognize the different palos and the different styles within each palo. And then, depending on what you do, to know how to sing them, how to dance them, how to accompany them with the guitar or the palmas or the cajon. Well, seen like that, it's a bit overwhelming, right? Because the repertoire is huge. And I would even say that it's not possible to know everything. So this is the first good news, right? It's not worth trying to know everything because it's not possible. And that alone is relaxing, right? What if I took it one step further and told you that you actually only needed to study 20% of the repertoire? Well, that's still a lot, but much, much less. And that's another very good news, right? How does the Pareto principle come into play here? In all that we hear and see of flamenco, the shows, the concerts, the videos, the albums, we never see the full extent of the repertoire, but just a sample. And concretely, in a show or on an album, there is no time anyway. You know, I often talk in terms of statistics, and after analyzing so many videos, so many shows, so many recordings, and from my own experience, I realized a very important thing that we always see and hear more or less the same things, the same palos and the same styles. Ask yourself the question and put your answer in the comments if you want. Which are the palos that you see and hear the most? Which are the palos that you have studied the most? What are the palos studied in most workshops? Which palo do people usually want to study the most? What are the more dense palos? Or just what do you know best? Or what do you like the most? There are no exact figures here. I'm just talking about the global principle. But we can roughly establish a ranking. The most common palos with, in the first place, la burreria. And then alegría, tango, and soleá. A little less common, but still very common. Fandango de Huelva, Siguiria, Tientos, Guajira, Sevillanas. Then a little less common, Taranto, Abandolaos, Farruca, 
Palos Libres from the Fandango family, like Malagueña, Granaina, Taranta, the family of the Tonar, Martinete, Debla, Carcerera, Palos that we hardly ever find, Cantinias, others than the Alegría de Cádiz, like El Mirabra, Caracoles, Romera, Cantinias Personales, La Caña, or even less El Polo, La Bambera, El Garrotín, La Mariana, Palos de Ida y Vuelta, others than the Guajira, like La Milonga or La Vidalita, and then Serrana, Liviana, Cabales, and so on. My purpose is not to make a complete list here. So we can deduce different Pareto flamenco principles. 80% of the time, we only see 20% of the repertoire. In a given palo, 80% of the singers know only 20% of the styles. And usually the singers only sing 20% of what they know. 80% of people learning flamenco guitar only study 20% of the guitarists. 80% of the bailes are structured the same way. This creates two major problems. We can think that flamenco is not that vast because we don't know what we don't know. I mean, we have no idea of the extent of what we don't know that exists. We are missing out a big potential for joy, happiness and enjoyment. Imagine, it's like food. If you enjoy food, but you think that there are only potatoes on earth, even if you love potatoes, imagine the happiness when you discover everything else. But this Pareto principle also has a big, big, big advantage. When you study flamenco, it's much better to start by focusing on the 20% of the repertoire that we find all the time. It's much less overwhelming, it's much more efficient and it's much faster. At the beginning, we don't need to get lost in rare palos and obscure styles that nobody sings. Another advantage is that once you understand the mechanics of the main palos, in fact, they apply everywhere, no matter the compass, the harmonic context, the type of letra. So later, when you go and take a look at the unusual palos, you'll have a much more global vision and you'll just have to adjust a little the rules of the game to the new palo. You remember, I also often talk about fractals. Pareto idea is really fractal too. I mean, it applies to all layers. Let's take an example. La Solea is one of the 20% most performed cantes. It is therefore better to study, to know how to identify, how to sing, how to dance, how to accompany Paul Solea than to study La Milonga, Los Caracoles or La Cabales. So you start working on the solea, but as you know, solea itself is huge. The repertoire of cante por solea is made up of dozens of different styles, if not hundreds. What I call a style is the melody of a letra associated with its processing. There are two videos on what is the letra exactly and what is the processing of a letra. The links are there in the description. But it's the same here, Pareto flies to our rescue. It turns out that in 80% of the solea we listen to, we find only 20% of the styles. And if we consider only the baile, the proportion reduces even more. In 90% of the baile por solea, we only hear 10% of the styles. This means that if you only knew 10% of the styles very well, which can represent, say, 10 styles, then you are ready for 90% of the bailes por solea. I can give you my Pareto list of styles por solea para baile. Let's say in solea de Alcalá, the three styles of Joaquín de la Paula and one style of La Roesna. In the solea de Triana, the style of La Andonda, which is almost in every baile por solea. In solea de Cádiz, one style of Enrique el Mellizo and one style of Paquirri. One or two styles de La Cerneta, Solea de Utrera. One style of Juaniquí de Lebrija and the Solea de Jerez de Frijones. I think these are 10 styles. If you know these 10 styles, you know more than enough. Isn't that awesome? And one more thing, we don't even need the lyrics to identify the styles, just the melody. It sounds doable, right? I mean, you know at least 10 different songs melody by heart, right? Happy birthday to you. Jingle Bells, Amazing Grace, Billie Jean, La Bamba. 
you already have five here and I'm sure you know dozens and you are able to recognize every song only with its melody. You don't need the lyrics, right? So why not with the Solea styles? It's exactly the same thing, but it's not finished. Concretely, how do we study this? Well, you have to look at each style in detail, that's for sure. Learn the basic melody and the different possible processing. But then again, Pareto is our friend. Por Solea, 90% of the time, we find the same processing, the same respiro in the same place, the same repetitions in the same places, and that regardless of the melody, just the structure of the song letra. The remaining 10% are unusual variations or even accidents because they happen. So once you understand that, you know where more the letra begin, where are the respiro when you can place the contestación and where most letras end when you can rematar with the caída del cante at the end of the letra. You understand that these proportions depend on the context. For instance, it depends on whether we are talking about cante, baile, or just guitar. The proportion can change. For example, most guitarists play por taranta, but very few singers sing por taranta. Each place can have its pareto. If you go to Jerez de la Frontera, you'll be immersed in burería, sigrilla, burería por solea, much more than fandango de Huelva that you will find in Huelva. When I worked in Japan, I saw that their pareto was very different because they were very fond of palos like el garrotín, los caracoles, la farruca. If it's a very structured, choreographed and rehearsed show, you'll find more unusual palos and styles than in the tablao. Because in the tablao, artists favor the palos and styles that everyone masters. And this will ensure more interaction, more enjoyment, more improvisation. When you want to play a game with people you don't know, you try to find the games that everyone knows, right? It depends on the teacher you have too. If you are in a dance academy with a teacher who likes to explore the wildness of the cante, so maybe you know La Bambera, La Alborea, or Jaleos Extremeños, or Fandangos de Lucena, or maybe these are Palos names that you never heard. And then your own taste, you have your own Pareto according to your taste. If you listen to flamenco that we call hondo, like deep flamenco, or even rancio. This is a very interesting term, but we'll need to talk about it another day. Then you listen to a lot of sigrilla and solea, for example. If you like flamenco a bit lighter, so maybe you listen to a lot of rumbas, tangos and alegrías. And everything is fine, it's just that we can just try to extend our own repertoire. <laughs> Your new friend Pareto is here to guide your learning. Here I am too, to help you identify and study the most important palos and style. But that doesn't fit in one video. This is what I do in my online classes and courses. The most important work, listening, active listening, trying to sing or just hum the basic melody of the different styles, understand the different processing, this is your job. I can't do that for you, but I'm here to make it easier for you. And that's all for today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope it could help. If it helps, you can also help me by liking this video, sharing it to the world, subscribing to the channel, leave me a comment, and also go and visit flamencomaps.com. There I explain all my online classes and courses and my way of teaching flamenco. I see you there. Till then, don't forget, learn flamenco, make it fun, make it different, make it yours, and make it easy. Thank you.